Hey everyone, just wanted to give an update on my weekend of printing with my new Rostock Max version 2 from Cine CNC. Right now I'm printing some coat hangers for the office. Uh, another fella, we have a make maker bot at the office and its primary function was to make these but it didn't work very well and, but these were actually pretty popular so I decided to make some. So I've kind of been using that as a test for various settings and whatnot. And I have made various changes from the default matter control settings that you download from CNC. Like one of the first things I did was reduce the layer height to 0.2. And that made a big difference. And now, so I did a lot of prints with matter control. And only recently did I switch to starting with, to going back to Repetier Hose just to see. I wasn't able to get the slicer, the one with the three in the name, uh, the slicer slicer working in matter control, whenever I used it, everything would just sort of hang and I would have to actually reboot the printer, turn it on and turn it off and disconnect uh, from matter control and restart that. It was weird. So now I'm using a slicer in here doing various settings with honeycomb and infills and uh, perimeter settings, just seeing what I've got. So I put my new fitting in Friday afternoon at about uh, tw well, technically it's been about two days and one hour, so what is that, 50, it's been about 50 hours since I made that episode 10 video, or 11, or whichever number it was, and I put the fitting in there. Since then, let's have a look at what we've been doing here. Total time printing is uh, coming up at 26 hours for 138, almost 139 meters, so pretty much 50% of the time it's been actually printing since I put that in there, it's just been going. Let's have a look at some of the things I did. So this was using the ABS. I did the whole Maker mag magazine calibrations just to try and get an idea. And you can see there is definitely room for improvement and that's what I've been trying to figure out is how do I make those changes. This is the Z resonance. And you can see it definitely had resonance in there. It got a little wonky. Uh, the first half was great and then it just sort of went out of kilter. The bridging. Uh, of course the calibration which was just a little bit off the overhang need to get some work there this was all done in ABS I've now been using PLA ever since then uh, I was only able to pull the one pin out of that one that was the only thing I could do there oh well and this one didn't slice properly this one failed only because it didn't slice properly hang on sorry I dropped something okay I also made these. These were some test prints for something I'm going to be making here soon. I'm actually going to be replacing the stock arm, spool arm, with something nice. So this was my first one, just to make to see if I had the distances and uh, uh, dimensions right, and I didn't, so I reprinted it, made some changes, reprinted it in pink. Uh, I've also gone through all of my filaments mostly. Uh, here I was just checking to see if I could make get the wood dimensions for the holes to try and get these in. Now what's weird is that my design has these as 3.2 millimeters. The same with the center hole on that, 3.2. This is only 3 millimeters, but once the printing was done, I can't get this in there. It just won't. Oops, sorry, this hole, the middle one. And I, I just can't get that in there. So. Yeah, I need some uh, accuracy work. The ends were cut off. You can see these bolts I have here. They're countersunk. So I've been looking to see if I could get the angles correctly on both of those. Which ones I like better. And they worked well. And then, of course, <laughs> the main thing that I've been printing. So these, I haven't actually had any failures. But I have stopped a couple of prints just because I kind of wanted to have a look at, you know, the partially finished, just to get an idea of what it was done. And then there's this, which is kind of what all my time has been printing. Right, let's uh, get up here. So, like I said, those coat hooks, the cubicle coat hooks, were pretty popular, so I've just been printing out uh, like four in each color. Where's my other purpose? Oh no. <laughs> and I've been using these to test various settings 
like honeycomb, like this one is all honeycomb and it's 30% infill and it's four layers and it's very strong. This one was something different and it's lighter. And I could tell, as soon as you pick it up, you can tell how heavy it is compared to the other ones. And uh, So various settings, little, little surface settings, changing, seeing how each one affects print time. It's really just been a bunch of experimenting with the printer and learning, trying to figure out what I need to do now to start um, getting some of the fine calibration working properly. Why do I keep knocking that over? So this was the fine positive space. And you can see there's uh, some threads hanging out there going across. So uh, on the slicer settings I'm using right now, I had the retraction considerably less than what was being used on matter control. So I've turned them up now for the next print, see what's going on. But overall, yeah, making progress, having a lot of fun with my printer. But like I said, it's really up to me now to sort this out. I need to get these dimensions working better. Um, like I really should have been able to just push this right in there and it should have been a nice roller bearing on there. But I can't even get that in and that's not good. And that's where this one comes in, negative space. That's where making these holes was supposed to work. But yeah, it didn't. This slippery. Oh, and uh, the purple glue? Yep, awesome. Works so very well. I haven't had any curling or anything. Um, just like the instructions say, one coat sideways, let it dry. It's dry. And then one coat the other way to give you a patchwork, let it dry. And then start printing. And yeah, once you're done printing, let the bed cool down. And once it hits like 40 degrees, these things just you pretty much just poke it and it pops right off once it's cooled. Yeah, it's great. Don't try to pull them off when it's hot, just wait. No point in waiting or doing it when it's hot when it's all sticky. It cools down, and you just kind of poke it and it pops right off. It's awesome. Looks like, okay, we just hit layer 80 out of 81. So two more layers to go, and you can see we got a lot of fine strands going, but I just cranked up the retraction on there. Um, the settings that you download from CME CNC for the Repeteer host are a little bit different than the ones that you use for matter control, and I don't understand why. It's loud, eh? One day, two hours. Total time for them. Crazy. But I, uh, I haven't had any actual failed prints. Just, like I said, just the ones that I killed because I wanted to look. And so they registered as failed in matter control. You have a really nice history in there. Oh, we're on uh, the last layer. Temperatures. So I realized my error earlier in thinking about temperatures. and So that's what I've been getting for temperatures. The bed is just a dead straight line, there's no point in looking at that. So that fan is just running good. The uh, layer fan. happy with any of these surfaces though. They're all gappy. I don't know why. Matter control, I didn't have any gappy surfaces, but since I've been using Slicer, I've been getting gappy surfaces. Bugs me. Okay, we're almost done here. 17, 15 seconds. Seems to be pretty good, this whole ETA on the rip on the Repeteer host. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2.
Plus it sings me a song. Matter Control doesn't sing me a song. So there's the print. And you can see there's a lot of uh, stuff hanging out. A lot of gloopy on the edges. So I definitely need to increase that retract, which I did. I think I'm going to increase it even more. But yeah, the surfaces at 0.2 are so much nicer than they were at uh, 0.25. So yeah, just going to let that cool. Overall, I'm still really enjoying my machine. Um, I got to do uh, some really interesting stuff with it. But the key is now just making sure that I can get my dimensions to be exactly what I need them to be. Because I'm going to be using a lot of rods and screws and stuff, and I need to make sure that these holes are going to... I don't want to have to keep building test parts and then resizing the holes just because i got to figure out how to make the things fit. So, fine-tuning the accuracy has got to be the next thing i got to do. And you know that motor up here? It gets warm. I mean, like, what's its temperature? It's hotter than that. Come on, bro. There we go. Like 50 degrees. 55 degrees. That seems excessive. I like, uh, I've been keeping these. All of the nice ones that I get, I keep them. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> all right, so that's the end of my videos. Um, thank you very much. This is my Rostock Max version 2. Cheers.